Hey everyone, welcome back. So I'm down at the river again, um, doing some catfishing, but this time doing it a little bit different. I'm putting out some set lines. So I went to the lake earlier today, got me some live baits, and uh, brought them back out here this evening and putting some lines out. Um, hopefully get a good quality cat uh, tomorrow morning when I come check these. Well, I kind of postponed setting these lines a little bit. I've been down here for a little while now. Uh, ran into a group of high school kids that were down here on the river trespassing. No one is uh, supposed to be down here other than uh, the owners and um, my dad and my family down here for um, hunting and fishing purposes. So um, I, They were just walking the river so it wasn't a big deal, but I postponed putting my, my lines out. I don't really want people knowing that I have uh, these lines set down here and where they're at. I'd like to prefer uh, avoiding having people come mess with them um, if I can. So I kind of postponed putting them out for a little while, but I think they've moved on far enough now that I can probably get these out and be okay. Uh, so I've got one in the water here already, and I'll show you kind of kind of what we're dealing with. So this is a homemade bank pole, um, and this is what I'm going to be running tonight. Uh, so I ran I've run set lines a number of different ways, um, most most frequently just a, tied to a a dead limb or a log or something up on the bank and cast out like a regular line and just come check it the next morning. Well I found that doing that I had a lot of problems with baits missing, turtles mess with my baits and stuff like that. A lot more problems with snags and then you know it's easier to get lazy and leave your lines behind and just leave a mess out there so with these kind of eliminate some of those issues. Um, they're a little bit heavier, bulkier if you're carrying them in somewhere but they seem to work really well. Um, so that's just a piece of PVC. This is a homemade setup. Um, shoved that thing into the bank at about a 45 degree angle or maybe slightly less. And then my, my bait is just, I've got a sinker and then a leader. And um, that sinker is just two or three inches under the surface and the bait under that. Uh, so of course we're, we're fishing really close to the bank. You would think that that's maybe not super intuitive. Uh, might not be super effective, but these things seem to really work very well. As these flatheads especially get active at night, they'll work up into these shallows and start to feed, and these bank poles really seem to work very well. Uh, you know, if you want some more information on them, um, or are interested in potentially building some of your own, there's all kinds of YouTube videos out there. I actually wrote an article on uh, fishing with these, um, and gave some, some pointers as well on... Uh, on how to build build your own for the DIY guy out there. So if you're interested in that, that was published in Fur Fish Game. I think it was in the August 2021 issue, maybe. Um, so you can go back and check that out. But I'm gonna get the rest of my poles out here and uh, got light bluegill for bait. And hopefully we we'll come back tomorrow morning and and they won't all be empty. Hopefully we'll have a fish or two on on them. All right, guys, I'm heading in to check these lines. Ordinarily, right about now, I'd be feeling pretty optimistic and excited to see what we got on our lines last night. I'm still, you know, experiencing a little bit of that, but I am trying to kind of push back against a little bit of pessimism. Um, had an interesting evening out here when I was putting these lines out last night. Saw five different individuals. Three of them were trespassers just walking the river. Hopefully I don't have any issues with them. They kind of moved on. Uh, upstream but they know where these lines are now and I'm hoping that they didn't come back last night and mess with them the other two were were not trespassers they were actually on the other the opposite side of the river and I don't think I'll have any problems with them but again I'd kind of just prefer that no one knew where my lines were so hopefully they haven't been messed with um, other than by some cats the other thing is when I was putting my baits out last night they were kind of starting to get basically dead <laughs> they were losing their juice so especially the last couple lines i put out basically putting dead baits on the hook which doesn't do a whole lot of good and doesn't really justify or merit all the work that goes into doing this kind of fishing um you know those dead baits really make a better make a better uh, turtle bait than especially flathead uh, catfish bait so trying to stay optimistic however um also ran into last night one line before I even left. Uh, one of the first lines I put out had already been stripped clean and the hook, it's a 10 knot hook, had actually been straightened. I actually switched the poles out because I had a spare pole, put a new pole in place there. Um, so if that hook has not been straightened, I would expect that at least the bait has been 
cleaned off of that hook and I didn't have any live baits to replace on that pole so went with a cut bluegill head on that line so like I was saying not really exactly the situation that, that I like to have when I come set these lines and come back to check them it's a lot of work I like to have everything really ideal um, situation this morning less than ideal i'm not feeling overly optimistic but i'm trying to stay optimistic so i'm i'm about to my spot here so we're gonna climb down this bank and go see if if we got anything if we do you guys will be seeing this video and if not you probably won't be because i probably won't be posting it but stay tuned hopefully we got a fish first line's got a fish on <laughs> must not be a very big one didn't strip any line off channel cat you just kind of fight them like you would a, if you had rod and reel you don't want to horse them so hard that you pop a hook out and lose the fish to sort of just work this pole like it's your fishing pole and you can see how these poles work they're buried in the mud here and at that angle these fish there's a lot of flex to them they work just like a fishing pole these fish aren't able to pull these out of the bank they work really well so this fish here start to tucker a little bit it's sort of making circles through here so next time it makes a circle around here hopefully i'll be able to get my hand on that line and work them in towards me parts of the challenge you don't have any slack to work with so you almost got to pull the pole out of the water to get that fish up on the bank we've got them landed here oh, kind of and that's why I wear gloves got that hook out and that's a very very nice channel cat Hold still for a picture for us there. I know I got the sun behind me. It's not going to be a great picture, but that's a very high quality, very nice fish on that river there. Probably in that 10, 12 pound range. Get them back. Go get them back in the water. Get them released. Go see if we got anything else on. All right, the next poles are just right up over here along the bank. This is a deeper hole. I hadn't fished before. I wanted to get good coverage on it, so I put three poles on it. So we're just gonna walk over, check these other lines. And this is where I'll come back to before I leave. So I'll leave these poles laying here on the bank. I may not actually be able to see that with the sun on camera. On this one, you can see the lines extended and at an angle. That's an indicator that there's either a fish on or at the very least had her bait stripped and there was something messing with it at some point last night. Empty. Pole number three on this hole. It does not look terribly promising, but you never really know until you get up to it. Take a look. Also empty. Oh, that is just a sinking feeling. You can't see that on camera from here. I'll show you when, you, when I get closer up there. I actually had one of these poles, poles pulled out of the bank. I can see it floating over there. That means two things. One, I've got to figure out how to cross the river to go retrieve that pole. And two, I had a fish that I'm sure I've since lost. Frustrating haven't had that happen before fortunately these things float so I can recover it if I can figure out how to cross the river without getting soaking wet in the meantime we do have a fish on this pole here it's kind of bobbing we'll try and get it landed without losing that pole if we can that's why it's really important to find a good bank and get that pole in shoved in the bank as far as you can
That's a smaller one there. Trying to get a look at it. I haven't got a look at it yet. Don't quite know what it is. It's a smaller fish, but got a lot of fight in it. Looks like a real dark channel cat. Again, shows you why I choose to wear gloves. There's that one there. Really pretty nice channel cat. Got the hook out. Get him back in the water. All right. I'll be walking back this way, so I'll leave that pole here for now. That was fun. Really dreading trying to figure out how I'm going to get that pole back. I don't know if I'll be able to get this morning. I might have to come back later with some waders. Man, that sucks, and that's my fault. I didn't have that pole in the ground far enough. All right, this one's another one that's got a fish on, so really not too, doing too bad for our catch ratio. This is fish number three on eight poles. That's not terrible. It's another channel. It's another channel cat, really cookie cutter quality in that eight to 12 pound range. I don't know what a man's gotta do to get a flathead around here. I'm sure that pole that got pulled out of the bank may have been my flathead, who knows. Not sure where all the flatheads went this year, but regardless, let's get this fish, see if we can land it. That one's a smaller fish. Well, I say that. Looked like a smaller fish. That one there got quite some energy. Splash in my face. Getting me all wet. Got line wrapped all around him. Alright, we're doing this one like this. We're gonna pull the pole out of the bank. We're gonna do it this way. And he's landed. Gee whiz. That fish now mud nasty muck all over my face. Look at that fish. Just covered in slime, nasty muck. Get that thing out of here. All right, we got one more pole to check. Go grab that pole. Then we gotta figure out how we're gonna get that other one back. So that one there has the line fully extended. And what you may not be able to see on camera, but that I can see, is that that line is kind of quivering. You can see some vibrations, oh, and then it's starting to move there. So definitely got a fish on this one. Another cookie cutter channel cat no flatheads to be found but that ain't bad four cats eight poles that's a 50 percent catch rate that's really pretty good and that's sort of what i found with these poles my catch rate just skyrocketed when i was just tossing out hand lines or set lines my catch rate i mean it, it was probably down in the 10 to 20 percent range That one's got a lot of line. No, I think we're going to do the same on this one as he just soaked me again, as we did with the last. We're just going to pull this pole out of the bank. 
and work it like a fishing pole. Let him tucker himself out a little bit before we bring him up on the bank. I don't feel like taking another mud bath. Alright. Finally got that fish there landed. After he threw a big old fit again nice channel cat got to be in that 10 pound ish range really can't complain about that I'd love to find a flathead when I came out here today that didn't happen that wasn't in the cards but I'm gonna get this fish back in the water because we're not done yet we gotta go see if we can figure out how to get that other pole back I see you got water on this fish here man see you got water on the lens there too you can't even see a thing I'm saying there, hopefully that got you cleaned up enough to at least get a good look at the fish before we put them back in the water. Let go, fish. Let go, you can go home. Quit biting me. This fish got attitude. All right, this spot right here looks both sketchy and good. A lot of stuff in the water there, which makes it a little sketchy, but if it is shallow, I may be able to cross right there and get over to that pole. All right, I backed off of that location up there. Just too sketchy with all that timber and stuff in the water there. Came up here to where them kids crossed last night. Looks to be about the shallowest location. A little sandbar here, but it still gets too deep for my little boots. So, kicking the boots off, peeling the socks off, gonna roll the pants up, get my toes mucky, cross the river here, <coughs> carrying my boots with me on my back or in my hand try to go get that pole all right just trying to take it slow definitely gonna get my pants a little bit wet but hopefully not too bad I'm definitely gonna end up putting my boots back on because I don't have enough hands to carry them so I'm definitely gonna fill them up with water but that's okay I can dry them out later I just don't want to get knocked over and get my whole body wet Right there, we're about halfway across the river, and that's where it starts getting a little deeper, a little faster flow course on this bend. It starts getting a little sketchy. That's why I've got my walking stick here, my boots filling with water. We did it. We got the pole. I had to get a little wet to do it. It's a little bit sketchy over there where the pole was because all those old rusty car bodies in the water. I had to be careful about where I put my foot. I didn't want to get injured. Those are going to need to go on the boot dryer. Well, folks, that was an adventure I didn't really care to have this morning. Um, but it was necessitated by my own actions. I put that pole out last night. I tried to shove it into a sandbar because I wanted it in that location. I felt that I would get a fish in that location. Obviously, there was a fish in that location, but I was not able to get my pole shoved nearly far enough into the bank, and I left it telling myself that, you know, it would be fine. Um, I think a lot of us kind of do that. I haven't had this issue before in the past with losing a pole, so I guess I was kind of tempted to push the limits there. And I have caught really big fish on these poles in the past. 
um, and they have held just fine and they do a great job in the mud banks but in a sandbar like I was on if you can't get your pole in deep enough obviously you're asking for issues it's kind of like trapping uh, any of you that are trappers out there um, you kind of push the limits a little bit on your staking mechanism staking that trap down until you have an issue and you lose a coyote you tell yourself well I've done this before I've cut corners in the past and I haven't lost any coyotes so you keep doing it and then you lose one and then you start to learn from it so I'm just really fortunate that the river flow is as low as it is so I was able to get across the river number one and number two that pole was left floating out there in the river and I was able to recover it <coughs> I was able to recover it. It would have been nice um, to obviously land the fish, and when you when you do hook a fish and then you lose it, naturally you make up stories in your mind. That must have been a really really big fish. Um, could have been the record-setting fish for all we know. Um, more than likely, it wasn't, but it probably was a relatively nice fish to be able to pull that pole out of the bank. Um, and any fish I catch I want to land so it sucks I lost the fish but it's awesome I was able to get the pole back it sucks that my pants are all wet my feet are wet I'm really gonna need a shower when I get back but all in all I had an excellent trip out here uh, my expectations were not high because of the, the events that transpired last night um, but four fish on eight poles having had a fifth one we know the story there that's an excellent catch rate on set lines um, if the story went differently and I didn't have any luck out here today, I might have been right in this location off for a while, but it really went very well, uh, well enough that I more than likely will be back here. I don't know how soon, but I will be back here, especially over there by the car bodies. That's just an awesome spot to catch some flatheads, and I have been struggling for whatever reason this year. I can't find a flathead. I've got some real nice channel cats. Uh, every channel cat I've caught has been in that 8 to 12-ish pound range, plus one I caught that was really pushing 20 pounds, was well in excess of 15. But I haven't been able to find any flatheads out here this year, so stay with me. The story will continue. The saga of, you know, the chase for the flathead, that's going to continue on. And at some point this summer, I'll find some. And I hope you guys are with me when I do. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.